too much, so it's about... Uh, I'm gonna talk now. <laughs> so, as I said before, my name is Jonathan Lahuri. I'm 25 years old, and I'm the Minority Coordinator at Reservist on Duty. Um, I was originally born in Lebanon in 1992 uh, to a family that uh, used to run the church in our village. My last name, actually, al Khuri in Arabic, is the priest. Uh, I come from a 14 generation of priests in my family. Uh, it was a surprise for my father that I didn't go that path, but I passed. Uh, <laughs> So I want to start and talk a bit about my, my, our life as Christians in Lebanon and the reason that I'm here today to talking to you and talking to you about Israel. My father was in the South Lebanon Army. Uh, the South Lebanon Army was established in 1982 with the help of Israel. Uh, what happened is that the civil war started in Lebanon during the 60s and 70s and eventually what happened is that the terror organizations and the, my, the other terror groups, they just joined together and attacked the Christians in South Lebanon. Uh, so we found ourselves one day without any law that protecting us, without the Lebanese military protecting us, and we had to do something in order to prevent that from illuminating us uh, from this land. So the Christians decided that they should go to Israel because Israel is facing a similar path uh, it's always being attacked from their neighbors and because they are a minority as well in the Middle East They thought that they couldn't get together and work together and find uh, a peace agreement In 1982 uh, The president that started the peace agreement with Israel was killed uh, was murdered actually by uh, terrorists and till today this agreement is still only on paper without any signature uh, that anyone is agreeing to sign. But after uh, my father joined uh, the South Lebanon Army, uh, he continued to fight side by side with the IDF soldiers in order to protect our villages. But in 2000, Israel decided to withdraw from South Lebanon after 18 years. And uh, my father uh, decided that he should leave Lebanon that day uh, because Hassan Nasrallah, the chief uh, of uh, the terror organization Hezbollah, said that he's going to persecute everyone that was part of the South Lebanon army and that he's going to find and charge and treason everyone that collaborated with Israel, everyone that worked in Israel, because we had buses every day traveling from the Israeli border to cities and villages in Israel because they gave them places to work in. And he decided to leave. My mom decided that we should stay in Lebanon because she, saw, she thought that an agreement will... Uh, will be done and that my father will be back uh, to his homeland. But it didn't happen and we found ourselves after a year and a half in a tough situation where the Hezbollah, yes, Hezbollah. I always confuse between Hezbollah and Hamas. They're basically the same thing, uh, <laughs> but by a different name. Um, no, no, no. Hamas is Sunni, Hezbollah is Shia. Yeah, but they're, they have the same purpose. <laughs> So um, we found ourselves in a situation where they started entering our home. Uh, there we had a few of the South Lebanon Army soldiers that didn't leave Lebanon that day. They came to their homes, they took them uh, at night, they uh, attacked the children and the women that were in the house, and they just took them in. Uh, some of them were discovered months later beside the roads. Some of them uh, didn't survive jail because uh, they went through tortures. Uh, some of them are still in prison till today. Uh, their basically their uh, treatment was based on their rank. My father was uh, an officer, high-ranked officer, so his uh, uh, path will be similar to those that didn't survive if he stayed in Lebanon. So my mom decided that we should leave Lebanon, and we found ourselves uh, without passports because in Lebanon it's not like just in here that, that you are born and you have a passport back then. Uh, we had to go and file uh, paper and documents that we are going for a vacation and that we are going to return back to, to Lebanon because everyone is leaving Lebanon. So they wanted to make sure that it doesn't happen. Um, my mom discovered one day that she is not responsible on her children. 
uh, the official uh, guy in the where we received our files said that she's not responsible or her children because we need the man of the house. My father wasn't in the picture because he was in Israel. So my grandfather said that he uh, is uh, uh, attacking us and that he is uh, not part of the family anymore and that he kicked him out and that he's responsible for us. That way we were able to leave Lebanon. We left Lebanon by night. Uh, we left our village in South Lebanon, two kilometers from the Israeli border, uh, and we went to the north, uh, to Beirut. My mom didn't tell me where we were going, and we didn't say goodbye to anyone of my family members in the south. Um, f suddenly, I found myself at the airport, and there I saw my mom's parents and my brothers, my father's brothers, standing there side by side, and they started to say goodbye. I didn't understand the situation because I was nine years old and I was holding two teddy bears that my grandmother gave me a month before because my mom said, listen, take something important to you because we're not gonna be back in a while. So I took two teddy bears. Uh, one of them didn't survive. I have only one because his head got off. <laughs> I'm not ISIS, I promise. <laughs> But uh, they used to have turning heads, so I turned them a lot, and one of them just like... Uh. <laughs> after that, we went on a plane, and 24 hours from Cyprus, after we went to the Israeli embassy, we landed in Israel, and we met and reunited with, our fa with my father. Uh, my father here, as you can see, I was cute here, right? <laughs> I was small. Um, this is my father in the car, and you can see that because it's really blurry, and it's like an old picture, but the South Lebanon Army uh, soldiers used to wear the IDF soldiers. So here on his shirt, it's written Tzahal, Tzadik Hei Lamed, it's the IDF uh, uniforms. So when we landed in Israel, we were united back with my father. That was taken one month after we reunited with him. And uh, we found ourselves in a tough situation again, because we are not, Jew we are not Jews. We're not part of the Jewish uh, uh, community. And uh, we, are, we weren't accepted by the Arab community as well. They said that we are traitors, that we betrayed our country, that uh, uh, we fought against the Lebanese government, and we can't take any part of their activity, not in their schools, not in their churches, not in their community. So we were literally in the center of things. We didn't know where to go. But the Jewish community schools and the Jewish community opened their hands for us. I was the only Arab-speaking kid in my class at the age of nine. So I found myself without anyone to talk to in class. I knew a bit of English because I studied in an English school in Lebanon. Uh, but no one at the age of nine in Israel knows English. Some of them after 18 as well. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, but I, I wanted to, to learn the, the new language for the new country that I, I now relocated to. Uh, so I had one teacher at school, took me every day in a different hour and a different time to teach me Hebrew. And uh, after three months, I learned to speak fluent Hebrew. Today, it's like best than my English and, and Arabic, but you know, it depends on the time and the area. Uh, uh, today, we are around 500 families of the South Lebanon Army in Israel. Uh, every year, uh, during Christmas times or celebrations, we found ourselves uh, together. Here is a picture uh, where we get together uh, for... Uh, I just want to move that. It, it's disrupting and it's off. Um, so, we found ourselves uh, without our family. We are only four people in Israel. So we found other families in order to try and get back uh, the, the huge celebrations that we had with our families because we missed that a lot in Israel. We can't communicate with our families in Lebanon. Uh, but we were really welcomed by the Israeli society. We were helped by the Israeli uh, civilians. Uh, and even in school, we were given the choice to read uh, a memorial uh, prayer for our fallen soldiers in the International IDF Memorial Day at school. That was something that we felt part of the Israeli society. I joined the National Service. I'm going to like do it really quick. I joined the National Service when, uh, when I was 18. I decided to do that. My brother joined uh, the IDF uh, service for three years. And I did that only because I felt 
part of the Israeli society. I knew that as part of that society, I need to do something for my uh, community as well. I did that national service in a hospital, in Rambam Facility Hospital, and during my national service, I encourage a lot of minorities to join that as well. Because we have things that we need to change in Israel for, for a better way. And in order to do that, we need to be part of that society. We need to take uh, uh, actions and we need to take part in every aspect of life. That means duties, and that means that we will, we're gonna be 100% in that. That's the reason today that we are all here, in order to share with you our stories, our perspective. Everyone comes f uh, with uh, activities in, in his own community, and today we are here together, working together, in order to make our uh, 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 communities better and our future better. That's the reason that we're here. And we're here to share that with you, for you to use, and for you uh, to share with other people. Because eventually, we have a future that we need to look at. And if we're not going to work together on it, the future will not be bright as we want it. Uh, so this is our message. Before um, we start with the Q&As, I want to show you a short video like uh, for, uh, for this, uh, to end this part. Uh, I had a cooking show. It had only two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wanted to show uh, Israel's uh, culture by food. As you can see, I really love food. And uh, what is a better way than to share it with the world? Because we have so many different cultures and uh, different backgrounds in Israel, and everyone brings his own unique culture and his own unique uh, uh, dishes and food from home. So this episode is on shakshuka. Uh, I'm sure, I know that you ate falafel, but you're going to get hungry after that. Uh, so enjoy. Kashuka is a dish made of tomatoes. When I grew up in Lebanon, people were killed at checkpoints for saying the word tomato in their own dialect. The Palestinian dialect is Pandora. But the Lebanese Christian dialect is Banadura. But now, I'm in Israel, and here we say Agbania, <laughs> or as the famous line says, I say tomato, and you say tomato. So let's go enjoy some shakshuka in the show. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the Mahni Yehuda show, and this is your place. What's yes. it called? It's a shakshuka house. It's called shakshuk. It's like market and shakshuka together. And now I show, we show you how we make the shakshuka. So we start to make in the morning, big cow. What's in the sauce? Onion, tomato, also garlic. All the things that I use in is from the shakshuka. Market. So we have here a few kind of shakshuka. The eggplant. We do the eggplant on fire. We put all the inside of the eggplant, and this is with like olive, and we serve it with a big bread. We eat it with the shakshuka. It's the best. So what is so special with this shakshuka? I tell you, when you cook with with love and with your heart, you feel the place that it's uh, special. My family, my grandmother uh, from Syria and my grandfather from uh, Kurdistan. So spoken at home uh, Kurdish, Hebrew and also Arabic. They lived in a mixed city or in a yes, mixed yes, village? Yes, like yes, 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 yes. So it's basically like this area over here. You are all mixed cultures and religions over here. Yes. In the Mahmi Yes. Uh, even your worker yes. is Muslim, right? Yes. They are connecting really good. Yes. <laughs> the people around here, who, who's your, uh, the people that come here to eat? So we have all the Muslim work here in the Shuk Makhane Uda. And of course we have all the people here that come to the market to shop. 
And I want to tell you about the people who work in the Shuk Machane Yehuda. Also Jewish and Arabic, we work here together like a family because we every day look at each other and we eat together and we, and you know, if something happens, uh, we are set together. Now I want to invite all the people, Arabic, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, all the people who come to eat here in Jerusalem because food, when it's come from it, my, uh, the heart, it's love, so it's for all the people. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you, Jonathan. I had a great day here in the Mahmi Yehuda show and I can't wait to show you more. Unfortunately, I can't show you more because the show ended. <laughs> but uh, thank you. This is my story. And uh, uh, so now we're going to start the Q&A uh, session.